We all know that having unprotected sex can give you STDs, like herpes or gonorrhea, but there's also one that can give you cancer, HPV, human papilloma virus. You can even get it through oral sex, which then can lead to oral cancer. It's still rare, but the numbers are rising and it's happening more in younger patients. I'm Jamie Winstone, and I know what it's like to watch someone close to me fight cancer. My good friend Paul had colon cancer and recently died. He was only 27. You know, his cancer couldn't be beaten. It was, you know, colon cancer, and there's not really a way to prevent it. But cancer from HPV, the human papillomavirus, can be prevented. A simple vaccination can stop it. That's all it takes, but it's only being given to girls. Why isn't the jab being offered to young boys as well as young girls? You know, why isn't there? You know, I want an explanation. I want to know what... I vaguely heard about HPV um, through having my smear tests, and I thought it was something that girls could get um, that could cause cervical cancer. Um, I had never, ever made the connection in my head between HPV and sex, uh, let alone oral sex, which... Even saying it sounds unbelievable. Um, and also that it's something that doesn't just affect women, it affects men too. You know, and I'm a sexually active person. Uh, you know, I want to know at what risk I'm putting myself by having sex. And I don't know much about HPV. But now I know that it's something that could cause cancer. I want to find out as much as I possibly can. What exactly is this human papillomavirus? Today we're travelling to Cambridge University to meet um, Professor Margaret Stanley, who's the queen bee of HPV. So I think she's going to fill in the gaps for me about this um, vaccine and answer a load of questions I have about that. So I'm quite excited to meet her. I hear she's, she's pretty intelligent, <laughs> pretty amazing. Margaret's a fellow at Christ's College. She's dedicated her life to HPV research and has even been awarded an OBE for it. Pretty impressive stuff. I suppose the first thing I want to ask is, how do you get the virus and, um, and, and what it, what it what is, is it? what is it? Well, HPV is a little virus that lives in the skin. You've got to remember that this, the skin just doesn't cover your outside. There's a skin-like covering in your mouth, your throat, uh, your vagina, uh, the anus, that's the back passage. So this virus lives in all those places. And um, it's a virus that doesn't get into the bloodstream. It only lives in the skin. So you get it basically from sex. So if you have vaginal sex, you get it in the cervix and the vagina. If you have anal sex or at the outside of the anus, you get it in the anus. And if you have oral sex, you get it in the mouth. So oral sex isn't safe? In a word, no. No. Lots of teens particularly have oral sex because they won't get pregnant. I have to tell them, that's the only thing they won't get. I mean, oral sex is sex, and so you get transmission of, of whatever you've got on your genitalia, okay? And that includes HPV. Interestingly, it's easier for a guy to acquire HPV from his, part, his female partner than for a woman to get HPV from a man. So if a guy is having oral sex with, his, with a girl, he's more likely to acquire HPV in his mouth than the woman is likely to acquire HPV if she's doing a blowjob on What? <laughs> you know, say if a guy was watching this now and he's had more than, you know, five sexual partners or performed oral sex with five or more women or men, you know, what would your advice be to him, you know, um, to not send him into a panic of, oh my God, I've got HPV. No, no, come on. First of all, it's a very common virus, you know. You and I will have had it, or you're likely to get it, I'll certainly have had it. Just about everybody acquires this virus. Nearly all of us get rid of it. 
but there are about oh one in ten people who don't manage to get rid of the virus because their immune systems for one reason or other can't handle it so the likelihood is you're fine so don't worry as they say in dad's army don't panic <laughs> <laughs> don't panic don't panic <laughs> but it's uh, there's a serious side to this because in the last couple of years there's been a lot of information come out and it shows that cancer caused by HPV in the mouth is higher than we thought and more concerningly it's going up at a very steep rate. HPV, the human papillomavirus, is very common and 80% of the sexually active population has it. It's usually spread through vaginal, anal and oral sex, which in some people could lead to cervical, anal and oral cancer. Cervical cancer kills over a thousand women a year. So in 2008, the NHS started to give the HPV vaccine to all schoolgirls. Boys weren't seen as a priority. The theory was, if the girls got the jab, they couldn't pass the virus on to the boys anyway. But as Margaret says, HPV oral cancer is rising. And even though it's still rare, new research says that men get it five times more than women. So surely HPV is something guys really need to be up on. Okay, so what I want to know today is if teenage boys are even aware of HPV, um, especially as they're the ones that aren't offered the jab against it. Um, you know, are they even aware that there's a, a virus you can catch through oral sex which can lead to cancer? Um, and, you know, if, even if they were offered the jab, would they have it? There's a sexually transmitted disease that, that you might not have heard about um, called H HPV. No, but what does it stand for? A human papillomavirus, basically. Human papillomavirus. Um, hopalopalop. Yeah, hop -a -lop -a -lop. <laughs> human papillomavirus. How many of you know what HPV is? You know, I've never heard of it. Never heard of it? Well, I haven't, haven't heard about it much. I just heard it from girls in college and that, saying that's why they're getting injection on that day. That's pretty much it. And do you know what it was for? Do you know why? I, was, was you told why? They just told me it's like a new virus that girls can catch. Like, so that's all I just thought, OK, cool. We boys did like it me. raise any bells in your head? Did, did you make no, anything well? Really. Yeah. Because I'm speaking to females about the actual jab that they're supposed to be getting for cervical cancer, they haven't actually described it as something that males should take as well as females. So we, but we've kind of took it like, OK, it's, it's only for females sort of thing. Like, males don't even need it at all. Well, HPV is, is basically a virus you can catch through oral sex, through oral contact, um, by going down on your girlfriend, basically, stuff like that. Something that boys and girls can carry as well. Um, how does that make you feel that, you know, that girls are getting offered this jab in school and, and not, not boys? That is unfair. I don't know why they can give it to girls and not boys. That is so stupid. They've come to my college, they've done it with girls, but I personally think they should have come with boys and educate us about it, because like, all we just see girls getting jabs, we haven't got a clue what's going on. Yeah, I agree with Moses here. It's kind of disrespectful. Um, even though we, we should be able to learn about the virus so we, so we won't be able to catch it, and also, like, give us an opportunity to get a jab if we wanted to as well. His new figures show there are now around 700 cases every year, of which at least 600 are men. And with no jab available to them on the NHS, it's the guys who are left unprotected. So, what's the deal for the boys? They could visit a private clinic like this one. But they'd better be feeling flush, because they'd have to fork out between three and four hundred pounds. The government is banking on boys not catching HPV because vaccinated girls can't pass it on. Giving us a wonderful HPV-free world, something called herd immunity. Not much comfort if you're gay.
And there's another problem. Right now, as it stands, it's down to the girls to protect the boys, as they're the only ones being offered the jab. Um, but the older girls, the 16 to 18 year old girls, aren't having it for some reason. So, what I want to know is are they aware of not only they're not protecting themselves, but they're also not protecting um, the men or the boys? It's going to be quite interesting to talk to these girls and find out what's at the bottom of this. I've come to a sixth form college in Hammersmith, West London. Hi, girls. Hi. I'm Jamie. Nice to meet you. Katie, Katie nice to meet you. These girls are between 16 and 18, and if they want the jab, they can get it free from their GP. OK, let's just talk frankly. Um, so, first thing I really want to know is, why have you girls not had the jab? I don't like testing new injections, cos even though they always... needles and stuff. No, I don't even mind the needles, but I just, I, I prefer to have more research on it than just go in straight away because it's a new injection and then find out five years down the line that, oh, there's a few side effects, you could die or you could develop some sort of disease, anything like that. Even if it's now been proven to stop well, cervical cancer? Well, my mum, um, she was talking to me about smear tests. Yeah. Because she told me about smear tests before, but I never knew it was for cervical cancer. So she said that if you get regular smear tests, then if you do develop the cancer, then it can be quickly um, counteracted. So I thought, if my mum can manage that, my nan can manage that, then why can't I? And what about you, girlies? Um, I heard about it in my GP. He didn't really give me much information on it. He just kind of assumed I knew what it was for. So, because I'm not sexually active, so I thought there's no point. I mean, are you waiting to become sexually active to have the jab, or where do you stand at, you know, the vaccination? Point. I may not know when I'm going to become sexually active, yeah. and then... So you're even questioning it now? Yeah, kind of time like, box. what do you do first, the jab or sex? HPV is basically a virus that kind of 80% of us carry, and uh, that can turn cancerous, and which you can get um, through oral sex. I'm not sure I if... I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Did you know that boys can... Uh, get a HPV too? No. Did you, you didn't? And did you know that you could actually give a partner or a boy HPV no. by um, receiving oral sex? Or... I just thought that boys transmitted it to girls. I didn't know that we could give it to them. Boys aren't being offered this jab. It's vaccinated. Only, only, only girls. Um, how does that make you feel? To be honest, we're in the same position, both the boys and girls. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit stupid and ignorant that they wouldn't give them the jabs. It will still protect you against getting cervical cancer, so it's not like there's nothing for those who can't get vaccinated. How would a man, an older man, approach this and sort of say, well, you know, I'm concerned, you know, it's, is yeah. it the same for as, as older women? Well, in fact, at the moment, of course, the vaccine isn't being given to boys at all, which I do think is a shame, because if we gave it to boys, it would increase the herd immunity, so it would help women as well. But also, of course, for men who have sex with men, they are at higher risk of getting uh, sort of, you know, things like genital warts, anal cancer, probably oral cancer, um, you know, all these other HPV-related diseases, and they're not going to get protected at all without a sort of vaccination program for boys. So I do think the earlier they could get vaccinated, yeah, the, the better. better. Will still... Professor David Salisbury is the man with the answers. He's the director of immunisation and he advises the government on what vaccinations should be given on the NHS. So during this documentary I've met someone who had suffered from HPV cancer and he has a, uh, a daughter and a son. And um, I found it quite unfair that, you know, he could get his daughter vaccinated with this jab, um, but his son couldn't, and especially as they, they were in, in nowhere near a position to afford it. Um, but how does that um, make you feel? What position does, does that put you in? What we do not have enough evidence for yet is, is it going to be cost-effective? Is it good use of money to vaccinate males? And it's not just one or two that might want it, we would have to vaccinate all of the males, that's 300,000 boys every year, and we have to know that doing that 
is in their interests. If I spend money irresponsibly, then other parts of health will suffer. But we have to make our decisions on the basis of the benefit to the individual and the benefit to the community. One of the people I've met during this, doing this documentary, um, his research shows that HPV-related oral cancer is rising, especially yeah. in men. Yeah. Um, that maybe change your opinion? Well, that's a very important piece of the, of the debate. What we need to know is how many of those oropharyngeal mouth and throat cancers are caused by the viruses that we can block with the vaccine. What would be the percentage of people with HPV-related cancer um, to, to bring in the vaccination for mouths? I just can't answer that. It's just such a complicated question. What we would have to do is run these extraordinarily uh, laborious computerized models that we do where we put in what if the proportion was this, what if the proportion was that. Lots and lots of computerized models of what if. So I can't, I simply can't tell you what 30,000 runs of a computer model yeah. will reveal. And if the what ifs come out to say the probability is good that this would be cost effective, then that's what, what makes us change our, our, our policy. So the government have to decide what treatments to offer and whether it's a good use of our money. To give all boys the HPV jab, it has to work out cheaper than to treat just the ones who would otherwise fall ill. But since 2008, boys have missed out because at the time, experts only had limited research showing low figures. Now, new research shows a sharp rise in the proportion of oral cancers with HPV. So, the government will now have to decide if the figures add up.